What's good, YouTube? It's Mary Boy Squiddy back in another video. Today, we're going to talk about how to beat Sprite. So, the French Nationals is actually taking place as we speak over the course of this weekend, and I see this deck is very, very popular. Obviously, they didn't get really hit in the ban list. Sprite starter going to two is pretty much laughable. Like, they really didn't lose anything. This deck is really oppressive. There are a bunch of ways to play it. You can play it with Runix, you can play it with the Melfis, or you can play it with the Live Twins as well. And the end result is generally the same. You're ending on at least four or five negates or interrupts uh, interactions to play with your opponent to stop them. So when they get the full board, it's uh, kind of hard to win, especially if you don't open any non-engine. So yeah, without further ado, let's dive in and talk about how you guys can beat this deck. So starting off with the Hand Traps, well, Ash Blossom is kind of, it's kind of awkward for hand traps against this deck because nothing really does anything. You typically need at least two or more non-engine cards in the form of hand traps or board breakers in order to interact and play the game with them. And the problem with cards like Ash is that it only interacts with one thing and they're still able to play regardless. However, I think Ash is still decently good. You can hit Sprite Starter for, uh, if they're starting that off with their play with just a starter, you definitely want to Ash that. Sprite Starter is kind of like your go-to. Uh, you can choose to also Ash it when they add it off of Jet because that might prevent them from getting into something like a Sprite Red or a Sprite Carrot, which would negate your spells and traps uh, on the following turn or on the same turn if you have multiple hand traps. And I definitely want to hold it for Gigantic as well, because typically Gigantic is how they bridge off into their other plays, whether that's access to their Sprite engine via Sprite Jet or Sprite Blue, or access to their secondary engine, which is either like the Melfis or um, the uh, Evil Twins. So like they're setting up the board and they do need the other secondary engine in order to get the maximum number of interrupts. So for example, Evil Twins allow them to pop with Evil Twin, Kiskill, and Lila being able to draw cards and then the Melfis being able to set up Herald of the Arclight on your turn as well as the uh, Melfi XYZ. So they have multiple interrupts there. Um, the other thing that you can also hit is actually the Nimble Angler that they send off the Sprint because a lot of times they'll sequence where they actually go into Sprint and then dump the Nimble Angler so they can special summon two copies of Nimble Beaver and then overlay the sprint with one copy of the beaver that they summoned into a gigantic so that gives them an extra free body on board so ashing there sometimes hurts them because they do need a specific number of bodies in order to make their full play typically and, and on uh an x number of negates with something like knife mascarina uh evil twin so on and so forth they do need multiple bodies in order to set that up otherwise they're gonna have to start linking off with some of their other bodies that they typically don't want to like sprite red or sprite carrot which means that they're gonna have at least one less negate so things like Effect Veiler, Infinite Impermanence, and Mourner as well, you want to reserve these for cards that actually bridge into um, their other engines because, again, that's how they get multiple in the gates. We typically want to two for one as much as possible against this deck and get the most value that we can because their advantage is snowballing. So if we're doing one for ones, we're just going to be nagging and then we're going to be losing because they're still going to get a free interrupt on top of our neg one. So typically you want to hit them where it hurts at the choke points where before they're getting into um, two or more uh, interruptions. So using that again on Gigantic Sprite is very good using the Veiler, Imperm, or the Ghost Mourner. Um, also, uh, you could make an argument for potentially hitting Sprite Jet if you want to prevent them from searching something like a Sprite Double Cross. But generally I like to hold it unless... Uh, they have like a gigantic. Sometimes your hand is a little awkward though, so you're forced to hit something else. Sometimes when you're uh, kind of desperate and they go like summon a level two and then a special summon blue, sometimes you're forced to kind of veil your imperm there if your hand is kind of awkward. But generally you do want to hold it for the gigantic, I think, or at least uh, when it hurts them the most. Nibiru is actually quite bad against this deck because of the fact that Gigantic locks you into level 2s for both players for the rest of the turn. So you can't really get a lot of value out of Nibiru unless they somehow mess up their combo or they're forced to make Gigantic at the end of the combo on 5th summons. But typically they also have Sprite Red on the board there as well. So it doesn't get a lot of value. Either it's dead or you get a 1 for 1 trade with Sprite Red. So Nibiru is definitely awful against this deck. You've probably sided out uh, in my opinion. Same thing with D-Shifter, it's actually not as good. Uh, it depends on the variant. It's a lot better th against the Live Twin version than it is the Melfi one because they don't rely on the graveyard as hard as the Live Twins, which have to resurrect uh, copies of each other from the graveyard in order to keep playing. So you could potentially side Shifter against that copy. Uh, that variant of the deck, especially if you're playing something like Cast Hero, where you don't have a lot of cards to side out anyways against them, so you might want to just keep Shifter in if you're already main decking it. But I wouldn't go out of my way to side deck Shifter against Sprites because they don't use their grave 
uh, as much. You're still going neg one on that interaction, and they're still going to be able to end on something like a Sprite Red and a Sprite Carrot just through their normal in-engine means. So they're still going to be able to negate your cards with what they have on the board, and you're going to be down to four cards plus the fifth card for your draw, right? So you're already down a card. Again, we don't want to neg. We don't want to try and trade with these guys because they're just snowballing advantage. The Sprites are just crazy. They're always adding cards to hand, always putting up negates. So we do want to play a lot of two-for-one cards uh, to the best of our ability. And that's also why I don't like Drone Lockward either. Again, this is another neg one. It's a lot like Shifter, you're just negging one. Sure, they can go like Pot of Prosperity, or they can go like Sprite Blue out of Jet and you Drone Lockward, and it kind of hurts them because they can't search on the consecutive Jet. But more often than not, they're still gonna be able to resolve Gigantic and still put up the same number of negates, and then you're again down a card, so it doesn't really do anything. Uh, all you're really doing in that case is basically Valoring a Jet um, with that Drone Lockbird, but only they get to choose how to proceed before they summon the jet. Like they get an extra, um, they get to see that you've drawn Lockbird and so they can kind of play around their turn uh, based on that and based on the fact that you lost a card from your hand, right? So in my opinion, I don't like this card uh, very much. Talking about two for ones though, you guys, uh, I think board breakers are a lot better. Dino Rustler Pankertops is one of the prime examples of the card that I sh think should be in every side deck right now. It just hits everything. It hits Floodgates as well, things like Anti-Spell. And then against Sprite, you can actually bait out and interrupt by trying to enter battle phase. So if they're playing like the Evil Twins, they're gonna be forced to special summon something out because your Evil Twins only work during the main phase. And then you can chain the effect of Pankertops to potentially pop either a Red or a Carrot. So they're forced to negate. So you're kind of getting a two for one uh, just because he has so much attack. And he's just so resilient. You can also choose to pop uh, things in their back row. So if they have like a Sprite Smasher set or a Smite Double Cross, which is a card that you can't actually deal with, then this could be very, very advantageous. So I re really, really like these cards that kind of allow you to get that two for one momentum. Kaijus aren't really a two for one, but I think they're still good because you get to choose which interaction you uh, interact with. It's not like up to your opponent where you're activating a card and being like, oh, I hope he doesn't negate this or I hope he does negate this. You just choose which one to tribute over and then from there you can proceed to do your plays. And it's very nice if they're playing like the evil twins and they just have the one evil twin out. If their combo is kind of awkward, you can just tribute over it immediately. Just remember to just tribute some of the kaiju in the zone of their link monsters, whether that be the evil twin or the sprint. So that way they can't use the sprite double cross to attempt to uh, special summon a targeted monster from either graveyard to the zone that their link monster points to or place your monster into uh, their link zone and take control of it. So just key things to remember there. But I do like how the Kaijus are very uh, interactive that you get to choose which one you turn off and then continue to play uh, based on that. So they're not like the best cards, but if you're already siding them anyways for a Rise Heart or other things in the meta, then this is definitely something you consider. And then other two for ones like Bistials, they're not the worst cards in the world. I think like obviously they don't really trade well into the graveyard, but Magnemite is really nice because you get to add another card to your end phase. So it's basically a two for one. And then on your turn, you can special summon it and you have two 2,500 bodies that can threaten to swing over both Sprite Blue, uh, Sprite Red and Sprite Carrot. So having those bodies is actually quite interesting. They're gonna be forced to pop and you only spent one card in order to make these. The only caveat is if they go Sprite, uh, gigantic early and they don't have any darks in their graveyard or lights then you're not going to be able to summon that magnum up because gigantic sprite will lock you into level twos but i still like how the bestials have uh, a lot of momentum a lot of times they are going to actually have like a sprite in the graveyard whether that's like a sprite jet or a sprite blue which are dark types or alternatively, if they have like any of the evil twin guys in the graveyard, which are also darks and lights, then you can banish them, summon a magma, and pays you get a search, you get the Jerusalem as well. So then when they get rid of the Jerusalem, you still get the effect of sand as well. So if you're already siding Bistials, this is potentially an option that you could side deck. If you have cards that are in your main deck that are not very good against sprites, like Drone Lockford, and you don't have anything to take out, then you can take them out for Bistials, in my opinion. They're good enough that they get some value and could potentially be the differing card that means life or death because you're getting that extra two for one value, threatening the over stuff by battle phase and then potentially resolve the rest of your engine cards and win. Other two for one cards, Triple Tactics Talon. This is a great card against this deck, especially going second. You're trying to break their board. Uh, so like when they activate an effect in the gate, you can bait on another interrupt by threatening to take, threatening to draw two cards. Uh, potentially looking at their hand, if your hand is good enough and you can't play through something like an Ash Blossom, if you're playing Branded, you could rip cards out of their hand as well. So I really like how this card is a lot of, it's two for one. You get to uh, negate something, turn something off. 
And same with enemy controller, because if you're playing like Cast Hero or any deck for that matter, and you go effect of a monster and they go negate, you can chain enemy controller, try and take something, and then they're forced to negate. Otherwise, if they can't, uh, negate if you've already baited out the carrot then you could probably take their gigantic sprite swing into something make a zeus and then get another interruption there right like try and threaten to wipe the board so it's really really nice in that aspect if you're playing sprites in the mirror match you could just steal a level two and then proceed to special summon out your, all your little sprites and then uh win the game from there and of course one of the best cards against this deck because it's a board establishing uh, deck that flops everything on another board. Uh, Dark Ruler No More is insane against this deck because they can't really interact with it. It stops like at least two for one. It could sometimes get like three or four for one. And then they're kind of reliant on the double cross or the smashers that they have set and then the hand traps that they have in their hand. But guys, this deck is a lot more weaker now that we don't have Sprite Elves. So they're expending a lot of the resources into that final board. Typically, they're only going to be ending with like two cards in hand, if even. So um, Dark Ruler makes it so you don't have to play through all of that. Basically, you're just like a level playing field. You just have to wipe their board, play through their hand traps, and you're set. So definitely be siding Dark Ruler if you guys aren't siding this format. It has some crossover against Arise Heart and other uh, big board decks like Super Heavy Samurai. People are still playing that and building up boards. It's also decent against Vanquish Soul because you can turn off Rock the Vanquisher. So going second, I think Dark Ruler is an absolute staple and it's definitely super good against this deck. Um, yeah, so key things to note, but just watch out for if they're siding Floodgates, so like Anti-Spell Fragrance as well, that could turn this off. So just make sure that you guys have answers for those in the side deck as well, uh, potentially cause cyclone or anything if you see anti-spell being flipped and then other spell cards that you're already playing in engine if you're playing like cast here and you're playing book of moon these are still decent because a lot like the kaijus you kind of turn you choose what to um uh turn off only they have the carrot to negate in this instance but you know you can choose to bait out the carrot and then you can choose like what to book a moon so you have that extra interruption um, the only unfortunate circumstance is that it does not actually work against the Link Monster. So if they have like a Sprite Sprint up with a Gigantic, in that case, then you can't really uh, get around the Sprint because you're still going to be able to detach from the Gigantic, even if it's face down to bounce one of your special summon monsters. So that's just one thing to be aware of. But it's still a good enough card that I think it warrants because it's still non-engine. That's a one-for-one -one trade at the worst and it baits something out and it's a quick play. So it could also be used going first against Sprites when they normal summon a level two. You can book that and then they're not going to be able to special summon a monster. Same thing if they go Sprite Starter into like a Sprite Blue and you book it. If they don't have another level two in the hand, then they're not going to be able to special summon their Onslaught of Sprites. So it's a lot of use as an interruption and also as a defensive card. And then the last card I kind of want to talk about is Deck Devastation Virus. It actually does hit a lot of cards uh, in this deck because everything, all of their weenies are 1500 or less attacks. So if you're playing like a Labyrinth deck or something that can search or make use of Deck Devastation Virus, you can actually hit all of these sprite cards and a lot of their other cards as well. It only is a little bit worse if they happen to brick on the Nemo Angler because they're going to get the effect when that's destroyed and send the graveyard from their hand. But that's all right. For the most part, you're going to be hitting their hand traps as well. So like everything like Ash Blossom, Mailer, uh, Mourner, they're all under zero attack. So that is really, really valuable resource. If your deck can afford to play Deck Devastation Virus, I think you should definitely think about it. Another thing that you can actually pair with the virus is Coldbreaker Virus Swords which is a generic link to that requires two effect monsters to make and it has 2300 attack so you contribute it off instantly with that devastation virus which requires a level uh which requires the dark monster with 2k or more attack and that's just like a toolbox link that you could fit into a lot of decks all you need is two monsters on board and then your deck devastation virus is live so yeah, that's about all I had for the sprites. Just remember to always trade two for one if you can. Play powerful board breakers and then stop them from getting their optimal board. Um, if you guys have any other ways that you think could be good against sprite, definitely let us know. And other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video.